Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for i5 for the iPhone is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This episode of i5 for the iPhone is brought to you by Rackspace, the open cloud company. At Rackspace, build what you want, where you want, and how you want, all backed by their world renowned fanatical support. Try it today. Download the open cloud at rackspace.com slash open. Hello, friends. It's been an entire week since we last saw each other, and I've missed you. I'm Sarah Lane, by the way. Remember me? It's time for us to pick this week's five best iPhone apps, news, tips, and tricks. Without further ado, let's do this thing. Number one, I just want to get the big new app out of the way. It's the one everybody's talking about. And no, I'm not talking about Facebook 6.0 and the stupid chat heads. I'm talking about Twitter music which launched last week, and after a few days of using it very heavily, I have to say, I absolutely love it. You've got your popular artists. Those are, you know, the usual suspects that people on Twitter tweet about a lot. Big names, Drake, Maroon 5, that sort of thing. Then you've got emerging artists. Those are the up-and-comers. You've got suggested artists based on music I like. And then you've got what my friends are actually actively tweeting about. Eh, the popular artist area, not that interesting to me. Some of the suggested artists for me aren't really even my style, but the emerging artists are interesting. And it's really good publicity on Twitter's part because the more people listen and tweet about emerging artists, the more people discover them, the more popular they potentially become. And because I'm already an audio subscriber, I can hook it up to Twitter music and hear full tracks rather than just iTunes clips. It turns into a very cool radio station if you use it that way. Right now, RDO and Spotify are the only streaming partners, but Twitter says they're working on more. Now, you might be saying to yourself, because I've heard this already, I don't really care what my friends are listening to. What do, I, what do I want to use Twitter music for? That might be true, but Twitter knows that musicians are a huge part of Twitter. In fact, they make up 8 out of 10 of the most followed Twitter accounts ever. And if they've got a new song, somebody like Lady Gaga has a new song to share with the world, Twitter's the place to spread the word, and Twitter music's the place to cut out all that other noise. It's also kind of fun to look at musician profiles and see what other artists they're following. Like, for example, Slash follows Fergie. Who knew? As for me, I like to keep it simple. Taylor Swift, Trinidad James. Number two. Back in November, on episode 17 of i5, we showed you an app called Sumly, which uses artificial intelligence to summarize the news from a variety of different sources into one place, kind of concising it. That's a verb I just made up. Well, last month, Yahoo acquired Sumly and pulled the app from the App Store, so we knew it was only a matter of time before somehow that technology made it into a Yahoo-branded app. That time is now. Yahoo's latest app just got released today in the U.S. version of the App Store, and sure enough, we've got Sumly's tech built right in. So by default, headlines look pretty standard. You just click through to read more. It doesn't really look any different. But if you turn on visual stories in your settings, you start seeing story summaries right on that main feed. They all say summary by Yahoo underneath. You can still click through to read the full article if you want more information, much like Sumly's original app did. Not all stories include summaries, though, and maybe that's just because it's early days and the summaries don't appear to be accessible at all from the more simple headline view, that's kind of limiting for all the people who aren't going to turn on visual viewing or just don't like the look. I have to say, though, Marissa Meyer and team over at Yahoo are busy. Last week, we got another iPhone app called Yahoo Weather. I'm not going to go into huge detail today because I feel like we talk about the weather a lot on i5 already, but believe me, the app is lovely. And now we've got Sumly, a company Yahoo bought just over a month ago, already getting baked into its iOS app. Bravo! Number three, let's play a game. Specifically a game recommended to me by Twit's favorite intern, Jeff Needles. It's actually been around a while, but chances are you've never heard of it 
I hadn't, and that's actually a shame because it's a great time passer. Internet meet Trism. It's a little like Bejeweled when you start getting going because your goal is to gather three or more triangles together and are you know, arranged by color. Once you do, they disappear and then the pieces fall into place accordingly. What's interesting is that your iPhone's internal gyroscope comes into play here. So you tilt your phone to the left or the right or upside down and you get your little pieces to fall in the direction of your choice. Once you get going, you get tons of points for things like super trisms and rainbow trisms. You have to watch out for bombed pieces, locked pieces, and too many empty spaces between your pieces as you move along. It's really fun. Trism has certain levels you can only unlock after a certain number of points, so it stays challenging. Even though the game, at least for me, is more meditative than it is stressful, if you like more drama, though, you can choose a timed version of the game or, or work totally within the gyroscope. This is my kind of game. It's geometric, it's, 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 it's a time waster. I spent like two hours without even thinking about it. And for $2.99, it makes spending an hour, I don't know, waiting at the DMV, pretty entertaining indeed. All I hear these days is cloud computing. Oh, cloud computing, it's everybody's favorite term, but not all cloud providers are the same. In fact, not even a little bit. Some use proprietary technology, and you know what the problem with that is? It's expensive and complicated when you want to move your data. What you want instead is an open cloud solution built on open standards. You know who does that? Rackspace, it's the open cloud company that co-founded OpenStack and now runs the world's largest open cloud, which means you're not locked into any single provider. You have the freedom to move your apps around and code and websites between multiple OpenStack-based clouds, public or private, on-premise or hosted. You can build what you want, where you want, how you want it, all backed by their world-renowned fanatical support. Download the open cloud at Rackspace.com slash open. That's Rackspace.com slash open. And we thank Rackspace for their support of i5 for the iPhone. Number four. I really Really love all the duh tips you guys send in every week. Very creative. Sometimes they're also a little bit weird, uh, like this one I got from Brad, who wishes that you could mark text as unread the way that you do with email. He writes, when you get a text, if you have your notifications set up like I do, you get a pop-up on your iPhone. That pop-up interrupts whatever you're doing and asks you to close or reply. But regardless of which one you choose, the text is marked as read but push your iPhone's lock button when that pop-up is present, then unlock it as normal, go back to whatever you're doing, then the pop-up is gone, but the text is still marked as unread. And as a bonus, if the text is short, you can read the entire thing in the pop-up before you lock your phone, so you get the best of both worlds, being able to read the text and also leaving the little number in the corner of your text app to remind you that you've got a text to respond to. That is one clunky duh tip, Brad, but <laughs> you're right, it does work. I tried it out, and I'm sure there's at least a few of you going, yeah, yeah, why can't we mark our text as unread? I like this duh tip. So hopefully that helps a bit, just passing it along. But now that we're all thinking about it, why can't we mark text as unread? It's kind of weird, right? Finally, number five, best for last. Ever since I started using Mailbox as my iPhone email app, I've gotten a lot more disciplined about responding and deleting and archiving and scheduling reminders for myself so I never have to feel like my email is piling up. I love Mailbox. And for those of you who've been stuck in the reservation system, waiting to be able to use the app, the good news is that Mailbox is now open to all. But Mailbox isn't the only app out there trying to save your sanity when it comes to email. Triage is another, and it's pretty clever. Now, unlike an app like Mailbox, Triage isn't actually a replacement solution, it's a companion. So you link up your accounts, and Triage will show you new unread messages one by one in a stack. To archive a message, you flick it up. To keep a message in your inbox for later, you flick it down. If you need to deal with an email right away, click it to view in full or reply. That's it. You can't even actually access your inbox or search from emails from triage. The idea is to stay on top of just the new stuff coming in, just to filter it out so you don't need to sift through stuff you don't care about when you're back at your computer later on or you've got more time. So if you're already using the Mailbox app to manage your email like I am and you love it, do you need triage? Probably not, but there's also no perfect solution to managing email. If you feel like it's hard to stay on top of everything coming in, 
Well, triage is a different way to quickly scan new messages wherever you happen to be without fully committing to some long email session. For $1.99, it supports Gmail, Yahoo Mail, iCloud Mail, and most email services that support IMAP. Go nuts. And that's it for this episode of i5. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. If you'd like to automatically download this show every week, it's the easiest way to watch. Just hit the subscribe button at twit.tv slash i5. That's where you can also catch up on past episodes and find links to our featured apps and our tips and our tricks too. Email us at i5 at twit.tv. Leave us a voicemail at 614 on i5 or send us a video with an app review of your own. I'm Sarah Lane and I'll see you next week right here on i5 for the iPhone. <laughs>